Welcome to Proudly Jewish Spotlight, where I put the spotlight on someone who has shown a great deal of Jewish pride. And the first person I'm going to put a spotlight on is Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry is a brilliant English actor, comedian, director, all kind, writer, all kinds of things. He is brilliant. And the first time I was exposed to Stephen Fry was in a show called A Bit of Fry and Laurie. Um, he was partnered with with uh, Hugh Laurie. Brilliant Hugh Laurie. You might know him from House, if you don't know him from other things. And Stephen Fry was just hilarious, as was Hugh Laurie, as is Hugh Laurie. And, um, but I remember when I first was exposed, brilliant stuff, hilarious stuff. And he did all kinds of other things as well, including Black Adder, which I just loved as well with Rowan Atkinson. Um, now, there's this Christmas message that Stephen Fry just put out for Channel 4 in England. And I'd like you to watch a little bit of it. Merry Christmas. As a child, I was almost unbearably excited by stockings, games, chocolates, presents. To this day, the aroma of mince pies triggers me into gulping fits of sentimental ecstasy. Mm. But as I grew out of childhood, realizing I was gay, I saw a long, lonely line of Christmases ahead of me. Exclusion, exile, and disgrace had been and surely always would be the fate of the homosexual. But look, in my short lifetime, well, I think of it as short, Britain has moved towards an understanding and acceptance of gay love. All right, it's not, it's not perfect, of course, but what an improvement over the grim culture in which I grew up. One truth about myself, however, that I never thought for one single second would ever be an issue about which I had any cause to worry in this country was that I'm a Jew. Yes, you heard me correctly. I am a Jew. That may surprise some people. It surprises me, really. I don't think of myself as especially Jewish. Indeed, Sometimes people rather embarrassingly refer to me as quintessentially English, whatever that means. I suppose it's because I love cricket and Shakespeare and the archers on Radio 4 and my vocal cords appear to be made of tweed. But if you take a swab of my spittle, as I did with one of those genetic services, up comes 52% Ashkenazi Jew, more than half which was a bit of a surprise. My mother's Jewish family came over from Central Europe in the 1930s, but my father died without knowing that he was a fraction Jewish. Maybe you were a fraction Jewish too, without knowing it. Does it matter? I mean, I don't really identify as Jewish any more than I identify as English or British. Then again, I know, because I've been warned, that I've been on lists of British Jews that some ultra-right-wing newspapers and sites have published over the years. And I'm frankly damned if I'll let anti-Semites be the ones who define me and take ownership of the word Jew, injecting it with their own spiteful venom. So I accept and claim the identity with pride. I am Stephen Fry and I am a Jew. Notice that he says he didn't think of himself as a Jew. Does that mean he didn't find himself, did, didn't think of himself as Jewish at all? No. He says he didn't think of himself as Jewish. He didn't think of himself as particularly English either. I think he's trying to say he's just Stephen Fry, right? An individual. And it's not so much that he is one thing or the other, but what he highlights is that at a time of incredible rising anti-Semitism where other people are defining what a Jew is, who is who is a Jew and who isn't a Jew, and of course passing judgment on it, he is not going to let that happen. He stands up and says, no, you don't get to do that. I claim my identity and I define it for myself. And I want, I do it through pride, which is brilliant. Now, 
What's also brilliant and amazing is the fact that he's doing this. At a time like this, right? He's stepping forward and saying, I am a Jew. And I say it proudly. At this time, when the Jewish people, the land of the Jews, the state of the Jewish people has been attacked in the most heinous way on October 7th. And what happened after that has been a, a, a an, an outpouring, not of support, but of anti-Semitism all around the world. And he points out to this inc incredibly um, terrible statistic in London alone about the rise in anti-Semitism. Let's watch a little more. The great Irish thinker and writer Connor Cruz O'Brien once said that anti-Semitism is a light sleeper. Well, it seems to have woken up of late. The horrendous events of October the 7th and the Israeli response seem to have stirred up this ancient hatred. It's agonizing to see all the violence and destruction that it's unfolding and the terrible loss of life on both sides brings me an overwhelming sadness and heartache. Now, one thing he says that makes me want to go, yeah, but, is when he says the horrendous events of October 7th and the Israeli response has, seen, has, has stirred up anti-Semitism. I want to say... Um, that Israel is entitled to respond and, and things of that nature. But I think he's actually being um, bang on with this statement. He is not passing judgment on, uh, on, on these actions. He is saying what has stirred up anti-Semitism. And I think he's, he makes a valid point. Let's watch some more. But whatever our opinions on what is happening, there can be no excuse for the behavior of some of our citizens. Again, he's right. Whatever you might think of the politics about who's right and who's wrong, there's no excuse for anti-Semitism. You don't take it out on Jews on the street, on Jews here, on Jews there. You don't do that. It's inexcusable. There's all kinds of wrongs that happen. Forget about what you think, if it's right or wrong. But there, when there are all kinds of terrible things that happen in the world, we don't take it out on the people who are associated with that people over. It, it just, it just, we don't do that. That's not acceptable. We live in a society where we have said that it is wrong to do so. Right? We all knew it was wrong to uh, to take it out, so to speak, on after 9-11 to go and and blame anyone who was Arab or, and I've seen this as I saw this back then as well, where people take it out people who they thought were Arab and they were not even. You don't do that. That's unacceptable. And he's saying, this is what Stephen Fry is saying, right? Anti-Semitism is never acceptable. There is no justification. There is no acceptable rationale for it. Let's watch a little more. Since October the 7th, there have been 50 separate reported incidents of anti-Semitism every single day in London alone, an increase of 1,350% according to the Metropolitan Police. Shop windows smashed, stars of David and swastikas daubed on walls of Jewish properties, synagogues and cemeteries. Jewish schools have been forced to close. There is real fear stalking the Jewish neighborhoods of Britain. And there's that statistic I was referring to before. And he goes into more detail to let the viewer understand exactly what Jews are facing. Now, if you're from the Jewish community, you might, you might think a lot of this is redundant and everybody knows. You'd be surprised. You really would be surprised how many people do not know what is going on and how the Jewish community is affected on a, on a real, real level, right? They don't know on a practical level what is happening, what is happening to our synagogues, what is happening to our schools, how it affects us, not just how we feel, but what is actually happening. So he's right to go into some of those details to explain how it manifests, how anti-Semitism manifests itself on the street uh, in, in real life for 
for Jews in, in this case, in England. Jewish people here are becoming fearful of showing themselves in Britain in 2023. My Jewish grandparents loved Britain, believing that Jews were more welcome here than in most countries. I'm glad they aren't alive now to read newspaper stories that would have reminded them of the 1930s Europe that they left. They believed Britishness meant being fair and decent. But what can be more unfair or indecent than race hatred, whether anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or any kind? We tend to think that with the progress of time comes the progress of ideas, of behavior, of conduct, of values. And Stephen Fry points it out correctly, right? I mean, meaning correctly, I agree with him is what I'm saying, that it's not the case. We've reverted to a darker past. And it's shameful. So what is my message this Christmas? The simple truth that we're all brothers and sisters? It's naive, but it's as good a message as any other. At this time, in the face of the greatest rise in anti-Jewish racism since records began, Jews should stand upright and proud in who they are. And so should you, whatever your genetic makeup. Standing upright means speaking up and calling out venomous slurs and hateful abuse wherever you encounter them. Knowing and loving this country as I do, I don't believe that most Britons are okay living in a society that judges hatreds of Jews to be the one acceptable form of racism. So, speak up, stand with us, be proud to be Jewish, or Jewish, or if not Jewish at all, proud to have us as much a part of this great nation as any other minority, as any of you. And that's the answer. Jewish pride. Being proud of who you are, not hiding and being sh ashamed of who you are. Speak up, he says. And he says that about Jews and Jewish allies, about f neighbors, friends, any decent person. If, it, if you see hatred, racial hatred, as in anti-Semitism or other hatreds, speak up. It is wrong. And notice that he says Jewish or Jewish, right? I, I, I don't want to say that he himself is Jewish, but uh, he points out earlier on about how, um, he, I'll put it another way. He isn't Jewish the way I am Jewish. I'm I'm a cantor. I'm clergy. I, I, I lead services in a synagogue. Um, and there are people who are far more observant than I am, who are more orthodox. I'm a conservative uh, Jew um, working in a conservative synagogue. And here he is talking about putting, um, putting up a Christmas tree and how he enjoyed Christmas as a child. Very different experience from mine. But we are of the same people. He identifies as a Jew. That is his heritage. That is his ancestry. It is mine. And we are brothers in history. We are brothers in identity. And in the eyes of those who hate us, there's no difference. Let's watch a little more. And so, this mad, quintessential, queer English Jew wishes you, whatever your race or creed, however you identify yourself, all peace, joy, and a very merry Xmas, formerly known as Twittermas. And now let's all exhale that great sigh that Jews have sighed for thousands of years. Oi. Oi, indeed. As we look to a new year in 2024, hoping that it is a better year for the entire world, but certainly for us as Jews, um, we say oi to the world. <laughs> no, uh, we we hope it's a better year, one of peace and one of uh, 
harmony between peoples. Stephen Fry, a very proud Jew. <laughs>